Esports is more than just playing games. I'm here to educate you on what this topic is all about, as well as show you and inspire you in what I've done in the collegiate space for the last three years. But first, I want to talk about a couple of stories from the students that have inspired me on this journey. For most gamers, they often are reluctant to, to admit that they spend a lot of time playing games, or the fact that they play games at all, as well as the community of peers that they connect with that they will more than likely never meet in real life. Fear of ridicule, fear of being mocked, a lot of them don't celebrate the fact that it has an impact on their life. I want to reference two specific quotes from students that continuously inspire me to keep pushing on. For most of my childhood, I was told I couldn't fit in or that something was wrong with me or that I was messed up in some way. I almost started to believe it myself. I can happily tell you now that this organization and the university as a whole has let me find a home. When I played video games, I could be whoever I wanted and do whatever I wanted to do. I didn't have to be the depressed, anxiety-stricken child. I could be a brave warrior dragonborn running around with sword and sorcery. Now, I reference these quotes as a means to inspire all gamers to come out of hiding because the world is changing, and I like to call it Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> Now, for my, for my friends and family of gamers who don't quite understand why this is such a viral topic, I hope at the least, at the end of this talk, that you understand that, the, that it's more than just playing games. So what is esports? There's money, there's sponsorships. You can have a lifestyle where you play games for the predominance of your career. Well, in short, absolutely yes. But like with most things, it requires some hard work. So let's start with defining what esports is so that we all have a common understanding. Gaming and esports are not the same thing. Gaming is best defined as playing a pickup game of basketball with your friends at a local court. Esports, however, is the NBA Finals. It is all that production, all that sponsorship, all that team development, and that reach. And for esports, it's a global reach. Now, there is one difference between this, in this comparison. Esports has no entry barrier for gender, height, nationality, and even if you're in a wheelchair, you can participate. So take what you know of sports entertainment, or analog sports, as I call it, and copy and paste it into the topic of esports. And you'll start to see that there's quite a bit more than just playing games. Now, I want to reference some numbers as a means to further define what I just explained and talk about some of its potential moving forward. In 2018, the NBA posted $8 billion in revenue, which is over 8.5 million, or 8% growth over the previous year. Esports posted $865 million. But look at that percentage of growth from the previous year and the previous year before that, and what is to come in two years from now. This is the only slide where I'm going to produce some numbers like this, as there's plenty of resource to research to reference these things with. The point that I'm trying to make is that it does generate revenue, which means it does create jobs. It's no longer a coincidence, and the opportunities in this topic span multiple sectors. So let's start, now that we've defined what esports is on the global scale and what its potential can be, let's talk about it in the higher education landscape specifically. 60% of the 18 to 29 U.S. age group plays a video game of some sort. How many of you guys play video games? Candy Crush counts. <laughs> At most universities, students that are seeking their undergraduate degree are this exact demographic. 60% of them. So as you can see, when they become adults, they still play video games. In fact, the average American gamer is now in their early to mid-30s. In the last semester alone, I had over 35 students from high, school, from high schools across the region reach out using gaming and esports programs as a metric to decide where they were going to start their collegiate journey. Now, for us at OU, we aren't really publishing and producing content for general consumption yet. But yet, these students still find, found us because they're digging down and doing the research completely on their own. Now, many, many universities in the U.S. are already developing esports programs to great success. However, I've noticed this 
trend where a lot of schools are approaching from the context of first to market, and if you build it, they will become mentalities. Now, while that might inspire prospective students for taking interest into your university, they'll be sorely disappointed to find that your program has less, uh, less substance. Despite the fact that you have that shiny gaming lab or that we have esports mentality, you're missing an opportunity to truly innovate an op uh, a topic that can set your university apart. Another trend that I've noticed in universities is that we often immediately ask what other universities are doing instead of listening to the voices within our own walls. The sad truth with esports and collegiate scene is that there is no cookie cutter design. What works at one university will more than likely, if not absolutely, not work at the next, and vice versa. So, where can universities start? Well, during our research phase, there were several key ideals that we wanted to build our program on. First, empower students to take ownership. Develop partnerships with pre-existing departments to keep the overhead low and bolstering pre-existing energies. And finally, the big one, innovate a pathway for self-sustainment to reduce the financial burden on prospective and current students. Now, I want to inspire any developer in the collegiate scene, as well as future developers, to remember that history often repeats itself. Collegiate football is often accredited to students coming together from Princeton and Rutgers in 1869 on an open field. That grassroots energy signifies what we see today and enjoy in collegiate football. The point that I'm trying to make is that collegiate esports is still very much a brand new topic, and we're all still just starting to scratch the surface. Through my experience talking with universities who are now past their initial research phases, all of us have started with an event to gauge interest on our campus. And this is a wonderful start, because while we think we understand the, the cultures on our campus as faculty and staff, the viewpoint from the student is often very different. So being able to find that one student to help you start this journey to galvanize energy sooner than later will help you on your path of success on a much faster rate. Those students are out there. You have to find them, you have to listen to them, and you have to enable them. So what's next? Well, let's look, at the, let's look at the missions on a university campus. And for all universities, we share one theme, academic curriculum. So let's take a look at the opportunities that this can present. On our specific campus, we found over 10 degrees that have logical academic tie-in opportunities. And we use this as a means to develop our leadership infrastructure and our program initiatives. And they go community which is the opportunity to provide engagement uh, programming for students, which is in line with every single university's student life departments. Second, leadership, which are the program, student, and faculty developers, aka the, the business practicum. Media and news, which is the journalistic practicum, as the voice of the development we just created, advocates for the stere against the stereotypes of gamers and is the showcase of who we are as a culture. Shoutcasting, or sportscasting for those not familiar with that word, is the lights, camera, and action of production of an esports event, aka the broadcast journalists. Fifth, streaming entertainment, the showcase of the vast diversity and personas that make up all the subgenres of gaming. Think about the cosplayer who's designing their costume for their next con, or the individual who's challenging a world record in a cult classic speedrun for Super Mario Bros. 3. And finally, intercollegiate competition, the topic where we find the majority of our university peers starting their development, we deliberately left last. Now, we did this because the majority of collegiate com competitive rosters are less than 10 students. And at least in our university, we have quite a few more than that. So now that we've defined what our development looks like, let's talk about that one topic I missed, revenue and sustainment. Leadership functions as our business operations. We have a media outlet with deliberate space for ad sales revenue. We have a television station through streaming entertainment that can package commercial airtime. We have teams that can compete and production that can be done in real time through that same television station that I just mentioned and also package commercial airtime. And we have a community that provides engaging programming for both casual and serious gamers alike 
as well as the communities that support our efforts. Now, the dream for us and the hope for you is that to think about a university center for collegiate esports and gaming development, where there are logical academic tie-ins, community engagement programming for everyone, a showcase for competitive energies, and a production house for entertainment, which will create a pathway for self-sustainment, draw new energies to your campus, and become a pool of resources to an industry that is obviously growing. We have effectively proven our concept with over two years of documented success, student buy-in, and have spent less than $2,500 of this university's money just by providing, providing a con an opportunity for students to take ownership. In the last school year, we had a student organization just under 600 students registered in our community, but every single one of our colleges on our campus was represented. On top of that, we had over 140 students engaged in extracurricular activities through those six pillars of development. The point that I'm trying to make is that with these pillars of development in our infrastructure, we've created a pathway for students to find a home, develop soft skills, understand teamwork, and interact with an industry that is continuously growing on a very, very drastic rate. Outside of the walls of OU, we actively collaborate with our peers in the industry to push this agenda forward as we all continue to figure out what works and what doesn't. The point of this talk is to showcase what some of those opportunities might look like as more and more of our collegiate peers start to dive into this topic across the globe. Remember our mission in higher education, which is to prepare our students for the industries of today and tomorrow. So get to innovating, listen to your students, and build something your university will be absolutely proud about. Thank you. <laughs>